All right, in the last video, we looked at two by two, or two sets of double digit numbers multiplying out. In this video, we're gonna look at three digit times two digit numbers. And the idea, of course, still connects from before. So let's say I have, um, I don't know, let's say I have 110, which could be this distance right here. And I wanna multiply it by this distance right here, which is longer, so actually let me pretend that this is the 110 and then this taller just this tall distance right here is going to be less than that it's going to be a two digit number let's say um, 70 so what do we do well the idea of course is that we can break both of these up into pieces I'm going to break the 70 up in to the to the ones and seven tens so in fact I'm going to leave it as one big chunk of seven tens here 110 I'm going to break it up into a hundred and then into tenths, something like this. So when we do this, right, and we break up the areas, we break up the numbers, what we're going to do is multiply the different combinations. So you'll see us at some point multiplying 70 by 100, and then 10 by, by 70, this small rectangle, and then adding them up. And that's some of the background of what's happening. I'm just saying here that we can take numbers when we're multiplying them, break them up in different ways, right, to form different areas, and then add up those two areas. And that will still give you the same total area. And we're here we're just thinking of multiplication as area. How does this look when we're actually working through it? Well, we have 110 times 70. Well, we start, as we've been doing in other modules here, take the 0 and distribute it to all the numbers above. And that, of course, gives us three zeros because 0 times anything is 0. And next we move on to the 7. And we take 7 times 0 is 0. But careful, that's a 7D. So before we even start this digit, we should put a 0 here. And now 7 times 0 is 0. 7 times 1, or 7 times, you can keep track of this, it's 7 tens times 1 ten gives us 700, right? 70 times 10 is 700. And then last we have 7 times 100, or 7, a uh, 7 d excuse me, times 100, which is 7,000. We get these two numbers, add them up, and we get 7,700. Let's look at it a little bit more challenging of an example. Clear this off. What if I had 123 times, um, let's say, 32? So now, really, we're breaking these numbers up. This is going to be thought of as 100 and 20 and just 3, and this is going to be thought of as 30 and 2, and then we're going to look at all the combinations. We'll take 2, multiply by 3, and then by 20, and then by 100, and then we'll look at 30, multiply that by 3, and 20, and then 100. And on an, an array model, or a rectangular model, all we're saying is we're breaking this up into, into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rectangles, which seems like, like a lot, but really, we can keep track of it even visually. So if this is, let's say, 100 by 30, 100 in length, and 30 in, and 30 in height, oops, excuse me, 123 in length, and 30 in height, we're breaking this up. So it's a 2 by 3. Uh, so we're taking 100, excuse me, and it's going to be 100, let's say about this far, and 20, and a little 3. And then here, in the other direction, we're breaking up the 30 into 30 and 2. And you can see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 areas that we're dealing with. The tiny areas of 2 by 3. Then 2 by 20 is over here. 2 by 20. And then this long skinny rectangle is going to be what? Well, that's 2 times 100, the first three combinations. And then we're looking at the larger rectangles, the larger combinations. So 30 by 3, that gives us this rectangle right here, right? And then this rectangle is 30 by 20, that combination. And this rectangle is 30 by 100. So there's six combinations to look at here, and we're actually going to represent that nice and neatly in this stack model. Here's how it looks. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. Moving on now to 30, so we put a 0 here as a placeholder, 
3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 3 is 3. Notice I didn't have to think about hundreds or tens or anything. Uh, that, that model is here in the background, right? That's what's happening, but it's nice and quick to use the stack model. And what we do next is add. So 6 and 0 is 6. 9 and 4 is 13. 6 and 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9, and then 3. So that's our total area down here. And again, the reason we're adding this up, if you look at the picture, if I found the area of these six rectangles and I wanted to know the total area, which is this right here, well, if I found six smaller areas, I would add them all up to find the total area. And that's why we add these two quantities right here. All right, thanks.